Hello everyone. Here we are with the updated revised video for the PIX 16F 5.4 7 segment display multiplexing tutorial. Wow, that was a mouthful. Anywho, we've actually got a quite a bit of uh, information to cover here, so I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. Now you're probably asking yourself what multiplexing is and why you would want to use it. Okay, challenge accepted. In our original single digit display design, we used seven bits to control the display and one additional bit to control the decimal point on that display. But if we want to control both digits, we would need to add an additional eight lines to control that digit as well. Well, the last time I checked, the PIX 16F54 only has 12 input output bits available, and eight of those are already assigned to the first digit on our display. So, to drive both displays, we need to use a different tactic, and that's where multiplexing comes in. So, what if we use two transistors to give the microcontroller control over when each digit is on and off? and we tie those data lines for the second digit into the same lines as the first. Now we can turn on digit 1, show some data, turn it off, then turn on digit 2, show some data, and turn it off, and so on. And if we do this fast enough, you won't be able to see each digit turning on and off. As far as the human eye is concerned, both digits are on at the same time. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, to update the circuit, we're going to need the following parts. Two NPN transistors. I'm using 4401s. Two 1K ohm resistors. One 6-pin header to connect the PIC kit to the breadboard. Wire to connect everything up. Before we go any further, let's define the digit on the left side of the LED display as digit 1. And the digit on the right side as digit 2. This will help us later on keep track of which digit we are talking about. Let's begin by inserting the transistors into the breadboard and then tie both collectors to plus 5 volts. Next, connect the emitter on the first transistor to the anode of the first digit. Then connect the emitter of the second transistor to the anode of the second digit. Insert a 1K ohm resistor so that one end is connected to the base of transistor 1 and the other end is in an empty row. Repeat this process for the second transistor. Connect a wire from the resistor for transistor 1 to A0, which is pin 17 on the MCU. And connect the resistor for transistor 2 to B7, which is pin 13 on the MCU. Now we need to tie all the segments from the second digit into the first. So segment A on digit 1 gets tied into segment A on digit 2, and so on. Let's test this and make sure everything is working correctly. Let's use a length of wire to create a temporary connection between plus 5 volts and the 1K ohm resistor on the transistors. Connect the wire to plus 5 volts and the other end to the 1K ohm resistor that's tied into transistor 1. Power up the circuit and make sure digit 1 is working correctly. Now, power down the circuit and move the wire from the first resistor to the second. Power up the circuit, and you should see digit 2 light up. If all goes well when you're testing your circuit, you know the circuit is configured correctly. But if you see an error, take a few minutes to track down the problem and correct it. Now, make sure you remove this temporary wire from the circuit before moving on. To make life a little easier, we are going to add a programming port to our circuit so we can plug the PIC kit right into it. I've made up several of these little adapters that have a 6-pin straight header along this side and a 6-pin right angle header along this side. This allows me to plug my PIC kit right into the breadboard for programming and the really cool thing is these adapters are really easy to make. Connect pin 1 to M clear. That's pin 4 on the F54. Connect pin 2 to plus 5 volts. Pin 3 to ground. 
pin 4 to program DAT. That's pin 13 on the F54. And pin 5 goes to program clock. That's pin 12 on the F54. Pin 6 isn't used, so leave that one disconnected. Now just plug in your pick kit 2 or 3, and we're ready to program the F54 without having to pull the chip from the circuit. Okay, so now that the circuit is updated, it's time to modify the code to run both digits. But before we begin that, let's add one line of code to turn on transistor 1 and make sure the display is working. So let's add this line, bit set f port b comma 7, right after the line move wf port b. Before we can program the pick, we need to set up port a as an output as well. So let's add the command tris port a to our start routine. Now compile the code and then erase the pick 16 f 54 load the assembly file, and then program the MCU. If all goes well, you'll see digit 1 leap to life and begin counting. Now that we know the display is working, it's time to modify the code to get the multiplexing working. First, we need to create a couple subroutines that will turn on and off our digits. The first routine will be called display underscore update underscore d1 bit clear f port b comma 7 this turns off digit 2 swap f display underscore counter comma w this command swaps the nibbles of display counter and stores the result in the working register we want to do this since for this digit we actually want to work with the upper four nibbles move wf display underscore temp. We're going to need the working register in a moment, so we need to store the data that is currently in the working register in display temp. Move LW0X0F. Now we need to filter out the upper nibble so we can safely use the lookup table. And WF display underscore temp comma W. This command actually filters the contents of display temp and stores the result in the working register. And now we're calling the routine that's actually going to look up the data we need to put the current number on the display. Move the data to port B. Bit set F port A comma zero. Turn on digit one so that the data is displayed. Now let's do the next routine. Display underscore update underscore D2. And the first command here is bit clear f port a comma zero which turns off digit one move lw zero x zero f which is our filter value and wf display temp comma w this filters out the upper four bits call seven seg underscore lookup move wf port b move our data out to port b bit set f port b comma 7 turn on digit 1 return and we need to go back to display update d1 and add a return command there as well before we start fully modifying the main routine i'd like to go over a few points about multiplexing the first is a problem called ghosting and this is where the image from one digit faintly appears on another digit Ghosting is caused by changing the data on the output port before the display is fully turned off. That's why the very first thing we do in our display update routines is turn off the display. The second concern is refresh rate. We have to design our code so that each digit is on long enough for the human eye to detect it. Let's write some code here and demonstrate what a poor refresh rate looks like. So let's add the following line after and wf call display underscore update underscore digit one. And let's delete these two lines of code. We don't need them anymore. And add call display underscore update underscore d2. As you can see, the display is being refreshed so fast that digit one isn't even visible. But digit two is visible because it's on almost all the time. This is due to a refresh rate that's out of balance. To fix this, we need to add some additional code. In between the display underscore update routines, let's add the command call display underscore pause. Let's recompile and then program the 
F54 and see what it looks like. Now isn't that interesting? We've got some strange behavior. So let's have a look at the code and see what's going on. Okay, I see. The delay routine is far too long and it is allowing each digit to stay off way too long. So let's go ahead and just remove one of the loops and try again. Yep, that looks a lot better. We can see both displays and they look pretty solid. The only problem we have now is that the counting is going way too fast. So let's see if we can fix that. Let's create a new variable name display underscore frequency. Now in the main routine, let's add the command increment f skip of zero display underscore frequency comma f. This will increment display frequency and when it equals zero, it will skip the next command. And that next command is go to main. So this will cause our refresh routine to run 256 times before we update our count. This change should improve the visibility of our display. Let's compile and program the microcontroller and see what the display looks like. Oh wow, now that is just a beautiful thing. The display is nice and bright and the count is slow enough for us to actually see what's going on. And that's what multiplexing is all about. Just controlling the LED display in such a way so that the data you want is shown on the digit you want. You can use the same technique on many more digits. The code presented here is intended only as an introduction to the basics of multiplexing. There's actually a lot more work that goes into developing reliable functional code that allows time for the microcontroller to do other things. Taking this code and modifying it in your own experiments is a great way to expand your own knowledge and understanding. Oh, and one last thing. These two lines right here can be removed since they don't serve any useful function anymore. Now, I'm going to actually be redoing these uh, tutorials using C. And at that point, I'm also going to go further into controlling the display just using a interrupt, which leaves the microcontroller free to do many of the things. So you can look forward to that coming up in the coming weeks. That's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching and take care. And be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. Hello everyone. So here we are with the updated video for the PIX 16F 54 multiplexing tutorial. And we've actually got a lot to cover, so I'm going to go ahead and blah, 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 blah. Wasn't that fun?